Food Wars, or Shokugeki no Soma, if you're a weeb like me, is a rarity in the anime world. Anime that revolve primarily around food are in short supply, which is a shame because I'm convinced that anime can make any premise interesting if the proper creative team is working on it. I mean, Assassination Classroom, The Royal Tutor, and Great Teacher Onizuka made school life far more engaging than it actually is, and made teaching seem like fun, while real made me interested in basketball, when I really don't care for sports. It's possible to make anything cool when given the energy of a shonen anime. However, I can count the number of food-related anime I know on one hand. Restaurant Paradiso, Restaurant to Another World, Bento, and Toriko are the only other food-specific anime that I can think of off the top of my head, and unfortunately they aren't really popular over here in America. The Toriko dub was cancelled due to low sales, and I haven't seen any of the other shows I mentioned, mostly because I keep forgetting they exist, given how little marketing I've seen for them. Well, aside from Bento, which Funimation aggressively markets, but even that show isn't strictly about food and is more focused on battling. What I'm trying to say is that food anime is extremely scarce, and what little we do have is not given enough marketing or attention, especially in the West. Because of this, it came as a huge shock to me when I found out just how popular Food Wars was. When the first season of the show premiered on Crunchyroll back in 2015, it was all anyone was talking about at the time. I kept seeing GIFs and images from the show appear on my Twitter feed, and to be honest, I was extremely wary of Food Wars based on these images mostly because it was filled with a metric ton of fan service. It was simply everywhere, and it made me think that this was just some etchy anime that I would hate. To be perfectly honest, I'm not a huge fan of fan service in anime, and shows that overuse sex appeal at the expense of a good story. So I simply ignored Food Wars for a few months. But then something strange happened. Everyone started praising this as the best anime that season. It was just so strange that I started asking some friends who were watching the show if this anime was any good. All they would tell me is to watch it and keep watching past episode 3. I didn't believe them at first, but then my friend Isaiah heard that I hadn't seen Food Wars yet. He invited me over his house one afternoon, and we proceeded to binge watch the first season of the show, and I immediately fell in love with Food Wars. Let's prepare a dish and dive into Food Wars, Shokugeki no Soma, and see what this hype is all about. Today I'm born anew! Food Wars primarily focuses on Yuki Hirasoma, a young boy who is a chef in training at his family diner. Yuki Hira's dream is to become a better chef than his father, Joichiro, and inherit the family diner, also named Yuki Hira. He tells his father that he intends to work at Yuki Hira for the rest of his life, studying under his father, but everything changes when Joichiro comes home one day and tells Soma that they'll be closing down the restaurant for three full years in order to help out one of his friends. In the meantime, he enrolls Soma in a cooking academy so that he can improve his cooking prowess. At first, Soma is taken aback by his request. After all, he spent his entire life working at the diner, 
What can a simple cooking school teach him that he doesn't already know from experience? However, once he arrives at the academy, he discovers that this is no ordinary school. Totsuki Culinary Academy is an elite school reserved for only the best of the best. It is a culinary battleground where only the strong survive and the graduation rate is a mere 10%. Can Soma survive in this school where every day is a battle? Will he be able to broaden his scope and learn what else the culinary world has to offer? This is the premise of Food Wars, and I simply love it. I was intrigued from the moment we learned about Totsuki Academy at the end of the first episode, and by the time he started classes in episode 3, I was simply hooked. The premise alone is great, and each new episode builds upon this premise to deliver something even more awesome each episode. What really sells this show is the execution. While it is a show primarily about cooking, it has the flair and buildup of a battle shown in manga. The stakes raise with each episode, with cliffhangers that keep you on the edge of your seat. The cooking is shown in full detail and explained thoroughly while also being shown in an over-the-top manner. Food is placed into frying pans with the same amount of style as someone dropping the mic on a massive stage. Onions are chopped lightning fast and tossed through the air. Eggs are cracked with insane precision and speed, as if Soma was the Flash. Every single action is presented like a meal at Shogun, where the chefs juggle the salt and pepper and create onion volcanoes. It's impossible to look away given the intensity of the cooking on display. Individual episodes are a blast to watch simply because of this. All the best parts of Shonen are on display here. However, what Food Wars really excels at is the overarching plot. Individually, the episodes are great, but that alone isn't enough to keep people coming back every week. I mean, I like cooking shows, but after a while, it's the same thing with just a new recipe. Food Wars structures its story arcs like a battle shonen as well. Each arc brings a new opponent or a challenge for Soma to face, and something new for him to learn. Soma battles his way into the academy, but once inside he also has to fight to become a resident of the dorm and keep from being expelled. Everything in this academy, no matter how big or small, is decided by Shokugeki or Food War. If you want to settle a dispute, you have a food war. If you want to get into a dorm, you have a food war. If you want to demolish somebody else's club room to make your own, you have a food war. This is a brutal place with no shortage of awesome things to explore. Over the course of the first season, Soma starts making a name for himself with his battles, but also by standing out during a grueling training camp and a tournament to show the best chefs at the academy. Again, this is structured like a battle shonen, but it flows so well you hardly even notice. The story itself is great, but the characters are even better. Each member of the extensive cast has a story to tell and personality in spades. There's Tadakoro Megumi, the small town girl who is an excellent chef with her homie cooking, but gets nervous when it comes to exams. Her arc over the course of this season is simply amazing as she grows from someone who is about to fail out of the academy into one of the top chefs at the school. I cried so many times as she succeeded and shed tears of joy that people actually liked her cooking. It's just so heartwarming to see in action. That's just one of the cast and each one is just as interesting as Megumi. Soma himself seems like a simple person on the surface, but he's far from simple. 
He may come from a small town diner, but he knows a lot from his experience. He's quick to think on his feet and learns from everything he does. Every time he's in a tight jam, he thinks his way out of it. He may come across as smug sometimes, but he can back it up, and he shows others the joy of cooking. He absolutely and completely loves to cook, and brings that passion to the table wherever he goes. In addition to those two, there are the other members of the Polar Star dormitory who all have a style of cooking that they specialize in. There's the bubbly Yuki Yoshino, who specializes in wild game, the laid-back Ryoko Sakaki, who specializes in fermentation, and Shun Ibusaki, the Prince of Smoke, a man of few words who specializes in smoked cooking and never showing us his face. There's Zenji Marui, the Professor of Taste, who may seem like a nerd at first, but specializes in research-based cooking, taking recipes from the past and using scientific study to improve upon them. These are just a handful of the many chefs at the Academy. There are dozens of other rivals in the school for everyone, like the Aldini brothers who specialize in Italian cooking, Akira Hayama, who specializes in cooking with spices, and Ryo Kurokiba, who specializes in seafood and has dual personalities that help him cook. Everyone has their own field of expertise, and they grow from their interactions with each other. It's so fascinating to see everyone's different cooking styles and how they can improve it and grow with each new story arc. Everyone gets their chance to shine, whether they win their own personal battles or fail and learn from that failure. This cast is simply great, and I always love seeing them in action because of each chef's unique skills, especially when they help each other out, learn from each other, and make better food as a result. Speaking of food, that is the main focus of this show, and this is done so incredibly well. It's not just the presentation of the food, but how well this is researched. They employed actual chefs to increase the accuracy of the show. All of the techniques you see in this show are techniques that actual chefs use in the kitchen. Every time you learn about a new ingredient or how something is prepared, this is showing you how to actually make it, and each dish can be replicated at home. This is a show that makes you hungry as you watch it, much like Toriko, but unlike other shows, you can create these dishes at home and eat them as you watch the show. My friends have done this before. In fact, Kat from Disney Debate got Eric a Food Wars cookbook one year so that we could actually start making these dishes. And here is the result of that decision. You ready to make something awesome and delicious? Let's cook. It. 
It's time to stop! And now, a few words from our guests. Well, first off, let me say that when I originally heard about Food Wars, I thought it was just another generic cooking show from the Food Network, which it kind of technically is. This Food Wars, however, turned out to be way more than I anticipated. I won't lie, the first time I watched Food Wars, I thought I was watching straight up porn. Now, this isn't the first anime I've seen that showcases that type of blatant fan service, but damn, my body and mind were not ready for that level of insanity. Normally, I'm not one to watch shows like that, and probably would have stopped after the first episode, but I typically have a two-episode rule when it comes to watching new shows, just to give them a fair chance, and decided to continue on. Luckily, the second episode was a lot better, and built up enough of an intrigue for me to continue watching. Well, before I knew it, Zen and I had binge-watched the entire first season, and were waiting obsessively for the second season to start. So in the meantime, I decided to do what every rabid fangirl does, and spread awareness of the show like a virus, introducing it to my friends Eric, Heather, and my husband Doug, all of whom also seem to love it. To me, Food Wars is an interesting anime, and one I never thought I'd be into. While it does contain blatant fan service almost to an obnoxious degree at times, on the surface it has many layers underneath that actually give it a lot of heart and intrigue. The characters are memorable and fun, the story is engaging and easy to follow, the humor is fantastic, there are many underlying mysteries and plot twists that you don't see coming, and it actually teaches you the fundamental aspects of cooking, as well as some thought-provoking life lessons. My favorite type of shows are ones that exceed my expectations and teach me things I never knew before, and this show does both, in the most deliciously foodgasmic way possible. Also, Megumi is best girl. For someone whose taste in anime tends to go against the Gundam slash Dragon Ball Z fare, this was a real treat for me. I always admired anime set in the real world, but still feel epic. Food Wars is not only epic, but it plays to the classic quest to the best trope by taking something like going through the ranks of a cooking school to be the ultimate chef. As someone who works in food for a living, I like how they use real ingredients and real recipes for all the dishes. Kat even made me a recipe book from all the recipes from the show so that I could try them at home. I love how each of the characters have a different cooking style as to showcase a wide variety of cooking techniques. All in all, if you're a foodie or just simply enjoy cooking, this is worth checking out. With all of that out of the way, let's discuss the fan service for a bit. Okay, first of all, I should make one thing perfectly clear. Fan service is perfectly fine depending on the context of the show. You see, I am extremely gay, and I don't mind seeing boobs and butts and other body parts from time to time. However, it has to make sense in the context of what is happening on screen. I criticize the fanservice in Gurren Lagann simply because it is dialed up to 11 in episode 6 and doesn't fit with the overall tone the show has set before but I think it's fine in the other episodes, simply because there is a reason for it in those episodes. That's not the problem here. The problem is when they randomly have one character poke someone else in the butt in episode 6. As for Food Wars though, the fan service is not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. For one thing, the majority of the fan service is showcased in the first two episodes. During these episodes, we see people's clothes rip off as they eat something delicious, creating something I like to refer to as a foodgasm. These foodgasms are the most blatant in the first two episodes, with episode one also containing a reference to tentacle hentai when somebody eats squid tentacles covered in peanut butter. To be honest, the first two episodes can be hard to watch, especially because of how blatant it is. This is why I say you should start watching the anime from episode 3. Episode 3 is where they tone down the fan service tremendously and start to focus on the main plot of the show. If you start from episode 3 and enjoy the show, you can always go back and watch the two episodes you skipped but for the most part, they only exist to set up who Soma is and how he gets into the school, all of which is summed up multiple times later on in the show. After episode 3, 
the fan service changes as well. Instead of clothes ripping off, we get magical girl transformations where alumni of the school transform into magical cabbage girls, outfits transforming to reflect the food they're eating, and all manner of different things that make the foodgasms enjoyable rather than squicky. I feel that once author Yuto Tsukuda and illustrator Shun Saiki had their audience hooked, they transformed the fan service into something that everyone can enjoy while still appealing to their publisher and editor. They did something truly remarkable, and while there are still some minor scenes of fan service later on, it's not intrusive and always gets a laugh out of me. I mean, just look at Ishiki Senpai in his naked apron. I mean, how could you not laugh at that? That is just hilarious to me. In terms of animation, Food Wars is produced by JC Staff, who have worked on some pretty impressive titles such as Slayers, Revolutionary Girl Utena, Shakugan no Shana, A Certain Magical Index, and Azumanga Daio. The designs are simple, but they all stand out with the colors and polish given to each character. When the animation heats up in the kitchen, it is fast and fluid, not quite to the level of Studio Bones or Madhouse, but enough to where it is stylish. They know just how to stylize the animation to make it seem realistic while still going over the top with it. When focusing on the story and characters, the animation relies on character models, sight gags, and other humorous venues to cut costs a bit, but never to the point where it becomes a detriment to the show. This isn't a show that requires too much flair outside of the kitchen, and they use the animation where it counts. In any case, while not the most superb animation I've ever seen, when it's good, it is awesome, especially when it comes to the opening and ending themes. Speaking of which, these themes are awesome. The first opening theme, Kiba no Uta, sets the stage, featuring a more laid-back academy theme while showing the major players Soma is going to encounter there. It's not my favorite theme in the show, but it really grows on you, and you'll be humming it throughout the show alongside the characters. Yeah, they actually sing the opening theme during a party in one episode, and I love it. The second opening theme, Rising Rainbow, is kick-ass going all out with its animation, as the characters duke it out with cookware and features my second favorite theme song in the series. It does a great job of setting up the tone for the second half of Season 1. As for the ending themes, both of them are great, but I do have a soft spot for the first ending theme, Spice. Just the way the characters are animated is so damn cute. I love it. In terms of music, the show has some really excellent themes behind it for every situation. When it needs to make us cry, it has some really heartbreaking background music. When it needs to be badass, it goes all out. When it needs to just be beautiful, it creates something truly powerful. This soundtrack is diverse and I never get tired of listening to it. This is a show about food, I remind you, but this soundtrack is something you could place in a superhero show. It is just that brilliant. Think Gurren Lagan, but with food. In terms of voice acting, you can't go wrong with the original Japanese or the English dub. Season 1 of Food Wars was licensed by Sentai Filmworks, and they did a really great job with this dub, in my opinion. While I found that a lot of the choices were rather unorthodox for the characters, for the most part they worked quite well. Blake Shepard is great as Yukihira. Jade Saxton is simply perfect, perfect as Tadakora Megumi. Lucy Christian is super enjoyable as Yuki, and Greg Ayers does a fantastic job as Zenji. I felt that 95% of this cast 
was not quite what I was expecting, but I ended up falling in love with their performances nonetheless. However, there are three performances that I did not particularly care for. First of all, Stephanie Whittles as Arena is extremely miscast. While she did grow on me a bit after a while, I hate the Valley Girl accent she gave to Arena. Most of the first two episodes are hard to watch in the dub simply because of this accent and the tone she gives to the character. Like I said, she gets better around episode 3, but I still have issues with the performance. Second of all, I do not care for Monica Rial as Jun Shiomi. Monica Rial is a great voice actress, but she was just not the right fit for this character. Jun's voice was very grating in the dub, and I feel they could have handed this role to somebody better suited, such as Tia Ballard. The final problem I have is with Isami Aldini's voice actor, Clint Bickham. He does a good job acting-wise, but personally, I don't like the voice itself. It would be fine if he just did that particular voice when Isami has his winter weight, but he uses it throughout the dub, and it just feels off. Not bad, just off. However, with that being said, this dub is excellent. When it gets going around episode 3, it really hits its stride, and I had fun for the entire season. The dub was directed by Kyle Colby Jones, who's known for directing Parasite the Maxim, Kino's Journey, and Log Horizon. For those that prefer dubs, you really can't go wrong here. Even with the problems I mentioned, it is really well put together. In terms of personal preference though, I enjoy the sub just a little more in this case. There's some really stand-up performances here, and nothing that I found fault in. Then again, that's my personal preference. Overall, I really love Food Wars Season 1. It's an anime that may not be for everyone due to the fan service used in the show, but I think it's highly worth your time. Just watch episode 3 first if you're a little hesitant. Trust me, you'll thank me later. As I said before, Food Wars Season 1 is currently licensed by Sentai Filmworks, and as such, it is rather expensive. The complete Season 1 Blu-ray is currently available on RightStuff.com for around $75, and the Deluxe Edition box set that I bought is available for around $150. These prices are subject to change due to the amazing sales on RightStuff.com, so check back often, and the prices may be lower in the future, especially during their holiday sales. The Deluxe Edition is highly worth your time regardless, since it comes with a complete set on both Blu-ray and DVD, a Season 1 summary booklet with artwork of the characters, a Kuma Bear apron, so you can go Naked Apron too, I have done this and it is quite fun, a set of chopsticks, metal pins featuring characters from the show, and a beautiful box to store it all in. Unfortunately, the Blu-ray and DVDs don't really have too many extras on them. There's clean opening and ending themes, and trailers for other Sentai shows, but that's about it. I really wish there was a commentary track or something else, because otherwise it's just the base show. It's a shame, but I guess they can't all be winners like the Bakano Extras, which I will be talking about in the future. With all that being said, I am Zenith Warrior Princess, the cutest of buns, and I will see you next time on Zen Anime. If you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that you too can join the Bun Squad, my legion of cute fluffy bunnies who interact with all of my videos. And don't forget to click on the bell so that you get every single notification, my buns. Have a good one, everybody.